Hey cruisers, happy Friday night. Thank you all so much for being here to talk about our top pro dining tips. Here is how tonight is going to work. We're gonna start out by sharing our top five overall dining tips. Then we are going to talk about some main dining room tips. And then we were we are going to open it up to a power round of questions for those of you who are in the chat to talk about some of your best dining tips and experiences. So tonight is all about dining. If you can keep your questions limited to dining related cruise questions, that would be super duper helpful so we can stay on track. Tonight's episode is sponsored by cruiseline.com where you can find reviews, tips and photos from real everyday cruisers. I always remind you guys to follow me on the Shipmate app, which is the partner app to cruiseline.com. My username over on Shipmate is Cruise Tips TV, all one word. You can type it in all lowercase. There's no spaces, there's no dashes. So yeah, let's follow each other. You can see when I upload photos and reviews over there, it's really fun. We can You can join my roll call if you're on my same cruise. Super, super fun. So let's get right into it. I'm gonna share my top five dining tips for a cruise for you right now. Number one is if you want a choice of your dining time at dinner, if you would like to choose between early, late, or any time, my recommendation to you is that you book your cruise early. What happens is as you get closer to that sailing date, the choices tend to get taken up and they go away, especially early set dining. Traditional early dining is still very popular on most North American mainstream cruises and it's gonna be the first to go. So book early if you want control and you want choice. That's usually the case. Number two tip tonight is if you are cruising on a ship that has specialty dining package, uh, packages available, they are amazing. Book them, book them, book them. If that is something that you're interested in, you will save money. And our number three tip tonight is if you are going to book specialty dining packages, you should consider booking them early as well because a lot of times the cruise lines offer discounts for booking them early. Not all cruise lines do, but for example, Royal Caribbean definitely has sales in their cruise planners. So that's something we highly recommend. If your cruise line does not have dining packages available, for example, maybe you're sailing with Princess and I don't think they usually have dining packages available, you can still book them online and in advance. And the reason you wanna do that is so that you can choose your date and your time. Once you get on board, those specialty restaurants get popular and they book up. So what you want to do is if you've got a set day that you really, really, really have your heart set on uh, going to specialty dining, book it in advance, book it online, or call the number on the Cruise Line website and get it done that way. Tip number four tonight is another specialty dining tip, and that is that you might want to consider booking a specialty restaurant on the first night of your cruise. There are so many reasons why you might want to do this and it really varies by line. One of the reasons we like to do it is to kick off our cruise with something extra special, something that makes us feel less frenzied, less in a hurry. And it just really puts you into that vacation mode and that is to just get out there and get in one of those specialty dining restaurants. And the next reason you might consider it is because there may be a little perk associated with it. For example, Carnival generally offers a free bottle of wine in their steakhouses on night one. Not all the time, not on all ships. It's a pretty darn good value. I've never met a bottle of wine that costs less than $25 on a cruise. Usually they're a lot more than that, so that can be an awesome value. Another reason to book a specialty dining restaurant on your first night is because they tend to be quite uncrowded. People are still concerned about unpacking. They're tired. They feel dirty from traveling all day, and they don't feel like going to specialty dining. But if you rally and make plans, you might be in for a real treat. We've tried this on a few cruises, and man, the service is usually excellent, and we really enjoy the experience. Tip number five tonight, is to consider, well, this is a little bit of a different one, and I'd like to get your opinion on this, you guys. Consider when you embark during the lunch hour. Consider not going to the buffet. Do some research in advance. And I know some of you are buffet lovers and you're gonna be hating on me for this one. Consider researching in advance what else might be open on embarkation day. So again, you can beat the crowds and do something a little different. Here are a few examples for you. On princess cruises, for example, they'll open the main dining rooms for lunch, but a lot of people have no idea that you can go have a super tranquil lunch, be served, order three courses, sit down, really relax, even if you have your your carry-on luggage with you, you can just bring it in and sit it next to you at a nice, beautiful table and enjoy yourself. 
That's an example from Princess Cruises. An example from maybe Carnival would be to go to one of the restaurants like Guy's Burger or Burgers or the Blue Iguana Cantina, where again, people don't know about these venues quite as much, so you might want to go check them out. Now on Royal Caribbean, if I'm not mistaken, you have some options too. Royal Caribbean fans, tell me, is the Solarium restaurant open on Embarkation Day lunch? I think it might be, and it could be a really good option. So I hope you like that little tip and this little group of tips for you. Now we're going to jump into the chat and say hello to everybody and then we're going to switch over and talk about some main dining room tips in a moment. I want to show you our giveaway really quickly. Tonight we're doing a giveaway from Royal Caribbean. We have some cute, wild little green glasses here that say Come Seek. These are from Royal Caribbean. And we have a really pretty um, beach towel that says Royal Caribbean International on it. I'll step back and hold it up for you so you can see. This is our giveaway tonight. This is an international giveaway because I'm mailing it from my own home. So anyone can enter and we'll tell you how to enter a little bit later. We always do the giveaway towards the end and we're gonna be choosing the winner live in the chat. So stay tuned and we'd love for you to participate in our rapid fire questions in order to be um, selected as a winner. So that is our giveaway. Thank you, Royal Caribbean. All right, so let's talk about some main dining room tips now. Actually, let me pop into the chat first. I miss everybody, I wanna say hi. Mr. Cruise Tips TV is gonna be putting some questions up on a little monitor I have here so that I can see them better. So if you have a dining question, feel free to ask it now and we'll get to it a little bit later. Okay, I know we have people from all over the world in the chat today. Thank you so much to those of you who are in very different time zones from the United States. We're so glad that you're here. Also want to give a big shout out to those of you who are newbies, who are first timers here in the live chat. We're so happy to have you. Thank you for jumping into this madness. We know it's crazy and busy. And if we miss your question, message me on our Facebook page, Cruise Tips TV, and I'll do my best to... Um, get back to you. So Pila, Kyla Plumey said on Carnival, what is open again? So on Carnival, you're gonna have the buffet and usually you'll have the free specialty restaurants open on embarkation. So if you have a, um, if you have the, is it the pig and anchor? If you have, if a ship with the pig and anchor, the seafood shack, those are usually open. Some of those are free, some paid. Seafood shack is paid. Guy's Burgers is usually open. Blue Iguana Cantina is usually open. Carnival doesn't usually open their, um, Carnival does not usually open their dining rooms on Embarkation Day that I know of, but those are some good options for you. Karen says, where's the best place to have lunch on Embarkation Day on Regal? I'd go to the main dining room on Princess anytime, Karen. Do that for sure. Good questions. Millie wants to know, how's mom after yesterday's incident? She's great. She had a totally relaxing day. We were talking about this in the pre-chat today. Um, hubby and son looked after her all day while I was at work. They spent the day together. She did a little bit of shopping and we don't let her lift a finger. She gets spoiled here. And the worst thing that she'd have to do is make her own breakfast. But other than that, she's doing great. We're gonna go out for pizza after this. And then um, she is taking us out for Korean barbecue this weekend. So we're gonna go and enjoy some wonderful Korean barbecue where you cook your food on an open grill um, as a celebration of our 20 year wedding anniversary. So Thanks, Mom. Sarah, no, there's not a big dress code in the main dining room for breakfast. Don't wear a swimsuit or a swimsuit cover-up with flip-flops per se, but other than that, very, very casual. You're going to see jean shorts. You're going to see tank tops. You're going to see sundresses. You're going to see people looking like they just woke up. Casual, casual, casual. Um, Johnny Witt said, is going out to eat dinner or having dinner brought to the room better? Johnny, usually going out's better. Room service menus on cruises are generally somewhat limited unless you're staying in a suite or an ultra luxury cruise line. So I would say usually go out. There's exceptions to that, but I think that you'd find the room service lim uh, menu limited and it would get boring after a little while. All right, let's talk about some main dining room tips. Then I'll answer some more questions soon. All right. Um, Main dining room tips for tonight. Let's talk a little bit about it because I think there's a few things that surprise people about the main dining room on most mass market cruise ships. And so we're gonna talk about things that we think would surprise you. If you're a brand new cruiser, you may not know these things. If you're a seasoned cruiser, you definitely know them. Number one, it is okay to ask for something that you want that's not on the menu within reason. So, you know, the cruise dining rooms are serving thousands of people per night, so you can't really go completely made to order on anything and everything. 
But there are definitely some basic items that you could probably ask for or some modifications just about any time that will be accommodated. So you might be able to ask for a simple pasta or a simple grilled meat like a chicken or something or for a slight modification of a menu item. You may get turned down, but I really want to encourage you to ask if there's something that just, if things just don't look good to you on the menu or you want a sauce removed or you want something kind of plain, think about what you're seeing on the menu and think about if they could modify for you. Maybe you want a hamburger and you don't see it on the menu. Maybe there's a hamburger on the kids menu and they could modify that for you. Maybe you want some chicken tenders and fries and you're a grown up and you don't think it's okay to ask but it's on the kids menu. These are things that people do every day on cruises and you can too. Another tip we have for you for main dining room um, etiquette and just ov an overall tip is to be on time to the main dining room if you have a set dining time. The way that these dining rooms work for main dining arrangements is they usually have an early seating and a late seating. And if you're super duper late, anything more than five or 10 minutes, you could throw off the next seating. So as a courtesy, we do recommend that you are on time. Another thing that new cruisers may not know is that when you sit down at the, um, in the main dining room and you're given a menu, you're gonna see that you have things from three courses. So you'll have appetizers, entrees, and desserts. Well, you can order as many things from each section of the menu in the main dining room as you would like. So if you want two appetizers and two entrees and no dessert, that's fine. If you want three shrimp cocktails for an appetizer and two entrees because you can't pick between them and two desserts, you can do that too. Of course, you should not be wasteful. We don't recommend that. But you can, you can have what you want on a cruise. Your main dining room experience is included in the cost of your cruise fare. Again, we're not suggesting that you're gluttonous or wasteful or anything like that. We're just saying it's okay to do that. I'm gonna give you an example that I like to give. This is a typical dinner for me in a main dining room. A typical dinner for me is going to be two appetizers, sometimes three. They're really small, you guys. If you order, let's just say you ordered a shrimp cocktail. You might get four teeny tiny shrimp in a little bed of cocktail sauce. It's not a lot of food. So a typical night for me would be a shrimp cocktail, a garden salad, and maybe a soup. Or I might even do like, um, like a crab cake and a salad and maybe even an appetizer sized entree, which you can also ask for. Sometimes you'll see a little note on the menu in the main course area that says, hey, you can get this as an appetizer size. And then usually I'll have one main course and I don't really care for dessert. So I'll skip dessert or I'll order a dessert and give it to my hubby and son and they can, they can try it out. I know a lot of people who will sit down every night in a dining room and order two shrimp cocktails just because they know they're small and they know they can. My dad does that and it's okay. You can totally do that. It's not a problem. I know people who order two desserts. Nobody's gonna judge you guys. Have a little fun with it. You're on vacation. And know that the cruise lines have adjusted their portions down over the years because they don't wanna waste food. So don't feel guilty about it. Get comfortable, have fun, relax, and don't just don't worry. This is your vacation. All right, so those are some of our, excuse me, main dining room tips. Stumbling over my words a little bit tonight. It's been a long week, but a good week. I've had a really good week. So those of you who have been asking, it's been a good one. Thank you very much for all of your concern. We appreciate all of you. See a lot of questions coming in. Let's get to those, and then we'll do a power round of questions soon. E. Nixon says, I know Norwegian doesn't have formal night, but what nights should we expect to be elegant or dress up night on a 14 day Panama Canal cruise? I can't tell you exactly, E. Nixon, what nights they'll be on a 14 nighter, but I can tell you that they're very likely to be sea days. They're very likely to be spread out throughout the course of the cruise. So you're pro they're, not, they're probably not gonna do them on a port day on a 14 night Panama Canal cruise because there are so many sea days. So an example could be something like night two and night 10 or night three and night 12, but I'm really pretty confident that you're not gonna see them happening on a, um, a port day. So that my friend is your answer. Um, let's see here. So Sherry Awesome Sunsets Travel, can you have breakfast delivered on Royal Oasis? So on Oasis class ships, my understanding of room service is you can definitely have continental breakfast delivered to your room. Any of the, um, you who in the house who are Royal Caribbean experts, please let us know the extent 
of the Royal Caribbean room service breakfast menu so that we can share that because I'm not familiar with it. Emily says, if you have any time dining, can you be seated with other people or are you seated with just the people in your party? You can ask for either. You can ask to be seated with just the people in your party or you can ask to be seated with others and they usually try to accommodate you. Okay, Jenny says, um, what about MSC cruises? Is there a specialty dining that you preferred? Are they open on embarkation day? Yes, they are open on embarkation day on MSC and on Seaside. Our favorite specialty restaurant was the Teppanyaki and our second favorite was Ocean K, the seafood restaurant. So they're very, very good. They're a little bit expensive, so I do recommend the dining package. It is a three night package on Seaside. San Singh says, first time on Royal Caribbean, we have my time dining. How early should we be to get our table each night? And for specialty, can you order more than one appetizer on? Try dessert. Okay, for my time dining on Royal Caribbean, I wouldn't show up more than five minutes early because, um, well, what you said, how early should you be to get your table? Okay, I see. I think I think I know what you mean. The way that my time dining works is that it varies a lot. You're usually going to have peak crowding during peak dinner hours. That would be something you'd experience at home as a peak dinner time. So usually between 6.30 and 7.45 is a really peak time. You could show up at the opening time of the dining room and have a better chance of getting a table, or you could wait until after the first wave of people has left the dining room and show up at maybe 8 p.m. and probably have a better choice. I missed the part about the specialty dining, um, so we'll have to get that later. Okay. Has anyone, Debbie Strager wants to know if anyone who is vegetarian has ever eaten at Wonderland on Royal Caribbean? Um, good question, Debbie. I don't know if they can accommodate that, but I would imagine they probably can. Amanda said, I've cruised with Royal Caribbean now and we're taking off on our first Carnival cruise in March. Does Carnival post the dinner menu in advance? Yeah, usually they post it um, outside of the dining room underneath some glass early in the day for that evening. Good question. Okay. So many good questions coming in. Mr. Cruz, are you putting in a bunch more questions for me or shall I go to the rapid fire round of, of fun? More, okay. Maciel Ospina, do kids pay the same price at specialty restaurants? That's an excellent, excellent question. Usually no. Usually one of two things will happen. Either they will offer you a children's menu that is specific to that dining venue at a reduced price or they will allow them to order off of the children's menu, um, just kind of general things from the children's menu. In my experience, it's pretty common for them to have a special menu for the kids and to charge something like $12. At least on Carnival, that was our experience, and on MSC, that was our experience. So usually they do offer you a reduced price. There's an age limit on that though. So yeah, okay. <laughs> Um, I see Rebecca asking if Norwegian has sugar-free desserts in the main dining room. Yes, Rebecca, you should see sugar-free desserts on the main dining room menus on all cruise lines these days. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, Angie, I have tried Sabatini's on Princess. It is not my favorite specialty restaurant. I do enjoy it, but I'm more likely to go to the steakhouse. I don't know what it is. I just don't love it. I find it to be a bit heavy, I think, but it is, it is good. It's just not my favorite. Okay. Live your best life for life says I don't drink alcohol or soda, but do I still have to purchase the most expensive package for smooth, for fruit smoothies and juices? Do you mean if someone else in your party is sailing with an alcohol package. If that's the case, you still have to buy the soda package, yes, um, in order to for that person to be allowed to have the, um, the alcohol package. But check with Royal Caribbean blog over on their forums, royalcaribbeanblog.com, and make sure that Matt and his team over there can vouch for that. Matt's in the house? Matt is in the house. Hey, Matt, good to see you here. Matt, did you like our swag tonight? Got some Royal Caribbean swag tonight. Yeah, super excited. Okay, um, Denise, Carnival Sea Day brunch usually runs around like 7.30 or 8 a.m. till about 1 p.m. Some ships it's later. I've seen it open later, like 8 or 8.30, but usually it's about that time. Good question. Um, okay, so Yi Chang is saying continental breakfast is free for room service on Royal Caribbean. You can pay for an American breakfast. Oh, I love it when you can get eggs. I will pay for those eggs if they're delivered to my room. I don't care. I just want my protein in the morning. Aw, uh, thanks for the super, the super chat, Jim. I see something about crab and lobster. 
<laughs> Jim, you know too that if there was an all-you-could-eat crab venue on a cruise, I would book that cruise just for the crab, okay? Let's just be honest. Crab is probably my favorite food group or food. All I need is some crab, a teeny bit of butter, a little bit of lemon, and it'll be flying, and it'll be stuck in my hair and in my earrings, and I, will, I won't care. I get like a like a crab coma when I eat crab. Sorry, this is way too much information. You guys are probably really not finding this to be flattering, but I love me some crab. Lena says, what is Sea Day Brunch? Lena, Sea Day Brunch is an offering that Carnival Cruise Lines has brilliantly developed that eliminates that whole breakfast and lunchtime thing. So Sea Day Brunch is actually where they open up the dining room on Carnival from the breakfast hours to the lunch hours and they run straight through. You can get breakfast and lunch items very cleverly prepared, by the way, things like huevos rancheros, omelets, breakfast items like that, and then, and wild things like Fruit Loop crusted French toast, but then you can get lunch items too, like pasta dishes, a Caesar salad with bacon on top, mac and cheese with bacon, just, ooh, really good comfort food. And it's so great. Oh, oh, and a Bloody Mary bar. They have like a Bloody Mary extravaganza at Sea Day Brunch. I don't drink Bloody Marys, but I've seen the Bloody Marys that they serve and they're phenom. Um, it eliminates that whole awkward time when the dining rooms tend to close between breakfast and lunch. It drives people nuts. So if you sleep in, you could still go have breakfast. If you want lunch for breakfast, you can still have it. And I'm that girl. I'm the girl who will order a Caesar salad with my omelet. So I love Sea Day Brunch. I think it's really good invention. Okay, all right, Darby says, in your opinion, what's the best specialty restaurant on Carnival? To me, it is always the Steakhouse Darby. I love Carnival Steakhouses. I will, I will classify them as one of my absolute favorite um, specialty restaurants at sea, and I think they're fantastic. Um, I was gonna say something else and I just lost my train of thought. Oh, I love Guy's Burgers too, they're really good. And I'm not a burger person. I always have to I have to qualify my, my Guy Fieri burger love with the fact that I never eat hamburgers at home. I just don't like them very much. I don't like the way they make me feel, but a Guy's Burger is a total exception to that. It's something about the thin, high quality patty, the shredded lettuce that they put on there, there's something about it, and just the toppings bar. It's all just amazing. Red Baker said, on specialty dining, can you use it for lunch instead of dinner? Sometimes, Red Baker, they do let you do some lunch things, but it depends on the cruise lines. Um, Zach the Mac says, do any cruise lines offer a murder mystery dinner experience? I don't know if they do right now. Let's see if we can help Zach the Mac with that one, guys. Okay. Um, Jennifer said, if I bring my own champagne, two bottles, can I get orange juice delivered to my room to make mimosas? Yes, 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 and yes, Jennifer, you can. And if for any reason they won't deliver it to you through room service, just go to the buffet, grab it yourself, and stick it in your fridge, and it will last for days. I do it all the time with grapefruit juice. And then what I do is I buy a bottle of gin from the room service menu, and I make gin and grapefruit and LaCroix in my room. Hot tip for you. Okay. Um, Edgar said, can kids get more than one entree in specialty dining in Royal? Oh, not usually, Edgar. That's one thing, you guys. I, I think this question came up earlier and we didn't answer it. Now, sometimes when you're in specialty dining restaurants, that whole thing I said earlier about ordering all you want from the menu in every categorization does not necessarily apply. So when you're in specialty dining, the portions are a lot bigger. You're going to have to ask when you get on the ship whether or not you can order two appetizers and more than one entree. Most of the time, you cannot order more than one entree without an upcharge. That may be an option to you for a small upcharge, or I, I don't want to say small, but for an upcharge. Sometimes they'll let you get two desserts. Sometimes they'll let you get two starters, but not all cruise lines allow you to pick multiple things from each course. So those of you who asked that earlier and I missed you, I'm so apologetic for that. Yes, Mark, we have tried Johnny Rockets and it's great. And hot tip, Johnny Rockets on Royal Caribbean, I believe is open for breakfast. Matt and the Royal Caribbean peeps in the house, chime in, tell me if I'm right, tell me if Johnny Rockets is open for breakfast. Tina and Rick Spencer, I like lime LaCroix, grape LaCroix, key lime LaCroix, any kind of LaCroix, I'm drinking it. Even after the scandal. I'm, I'm not sure about the scandal, but you know, I have to mention it because if I don't, somebody's gonna say something about it. Um, Christina Hawk said, what is the least specialty restaurant on Norwegian? Christina, do you mean the least expensive? Um, 
The Italian one is probably less expensive than, say, the steakhouse. I think teppanyaki steak and Moderno run on the higher end. Um, anybody who's a Norwegian expert, let me know. Christine. Christine Levesque says, is tea time good on Princess? Oh yes, Christine. If you like the best scones, clotted cream, and jam at sea, on a cruise line that I've been on. I haven't been on every cruise line in the world, so I can only compare it to the ones I've been on. Princess is your jam. We will literally delay dinner because tea is so good. Because when you go to tea at 3.30 on Princess, it's like 3.30 to 4.30, you don't eat a little bit. You eat a pretty good amount. So you're like drinking your tea, you're eating scones, and then they're bringing more sandwiches, and they're bringing more cookies, and they really want to give you more. Watch our vlogs from Princess, and you will see tea time in real time. We actually have a, an entire 360 video experience. The waiters surround you and they are constantly trying to give you more. And man, does it require restraint because it is phenomenal. Everyone in our family, my mom, my husband, my son, myself, we love princess tea time. It's so good. But you'll be full and you'll kind of regret it afterwards. You're like, oh man, why did I do that? Dinner's in like an hour. <laughs> Shoot, I shouldn't have done that, right? So anyway, um, let's see here. Theborn said, I've heard Carnival sells a case of water for $4.50 prior to the cruise. Is it true? I don't know about a case of water. On my last Carnival cruise, I think I bought a 12 pack for a very reasonable price. Carnival does a very good job of keeping that water price really low. Since they have banned plastic bottles on their cruise line, I think that they feel it's their responsibility to offer an alternative. And now I'm gonna absolutely buy my bottled water in advance with Carnival, and I don't care that I don't have to carry it on, on because it's cheaper. Yeah, it's a little bit more expensive than you'd, you know, if you bought it at a discount store, but it's certainly reasonable compared to other cruise lines. Okay, yeah, Christina, you said what's the best restaurant on Norwegian, best specialty restaurant in Norwegian? Well, you hold it tight here, Christina, because we're gonna ask our community in a minute. Um, yeah, Carol, sometimes Carnival does have tea time. Um, Edgar wants to know what's the best specialty restaurant on Liberty of the Seas for Royal Caribbean. So what do you guys think? What's the best specialty restaurant on Liberty of the Seas for Royal Caribbean? Is it Chops? Let's see what everybody says. Um, I haven't, James, I haven't done the Carnival behind the scenes tour and meal. And I think we're caught up with some of the questions. Okay, guys, it's time for a rapid fire. Yeah, Pamela, you can bring soda or water on Royal Caribbean. Make sure you go to royalcaribbeanblog.com to read Matt's recent article and post on that. He has the official statement from um, Royal Caribbean. They have changed their policy and you can take it, but it must be in your carry-on bag. Do not check it. That is a no-no. Okay, guys. We're getting ready for our rapid fire round of questions. When we, since the giveaway is global tonight, we're, we're going to pick a winner from the question answering session. So you're not really entering the giveaway per se, you're just participating and then we're gonna randomly pick a winner. Mr. Cruise Tips TV, I'll explain that to you in a minute because I know it's gonna make your job really a lot harder because there's gonna be a lot of questions. You're good? Okay. So we're gonna be asking you a series of four questions tonight. Um, about dining and I want everybody to do their best to jump in the chat and answer them I'm gonna read a few of them if I can so all you have to do to enter the giveaway tonight is just participate and we'll pick somebody please don't thumbs down the video if you don't win we still love everybody <laughs> I'm convinced that some of the thumbs downs we get are from people who don't win but we, we do love you so please don't do that it makes me sad I don't like thumbs downs Give us a thumbs up instead. Okay, all right, here we go, guys. Here's a power round of questions for you, our subscribers. If you are watching this as a replay, make sure you click on the button that says live chat so you can see all this amazingness on your screen. It's here for you. Okay, here we go. All right, folks, tell us, what is your preferred dining time? Is your preferred dining time early dining, late dining, so early traditional, early late, anytime dining, or heck no, I just go to the buffet, go. Tell us what it is. I'm just gonna watch and enjoy and have a sip of my cocktail that Mr. Cruise Tips TV made for me when I got home from work. Thanks, honey, it's really good. I'm looking at you. <laughs> for those of you who are wondering, I'm having a diet Dr. Pepper and rum. My son calls it Dr. Peppy. Well, he did when he was a baby. And so we still call it Dr. Peppy in our house. I think that's really cute. All right. 
Rebecca Schaefer asks, how much extra should you expect to pay when dining in a specialty restaurant? Specialty dining ranges from 10 to $95 per person per experience. The average cost of a specialty dining meal is probably somewhere in the $30 to $40 range for something that's a little bit more high end. You can find some Italian and, you know, somewhat specialty restaurants for maybe the $10 to $15 range, but most of them are about $30 to $40. That's interesting. Let's see what everybody says. If they're early diners, late diners, anytime diners, or buffet diners. I'm seeing a lot of early, I'm seeing a lot of late, I'm seeing a lot of anytime. I think, you guys, that anytime dining is the wave of the future. I personally don't love it yet. I'm a late dining girl, but I, um, I really think anytime dining is something that people are getting very used to and they're really comfortable with. I'll read a few of these. Christine Aleman says, anytime. <laughs> Isabel's very specific and says five o'clock. John Garrick says, late dining. Cynthia R says, early. Sid says, anytime. Grace says, late. So there's a lot of different variations here. Mike and Cheryl are with us. They do late dining. So yeah, everybody get in their, their time. Ooh, J Sign and Pink is buffet. I see a buffet coming in. <laughs> Oh my gosh, no, there's nothing wrong with the main dining room. The main dining room is wonderful. Sassafras says, we like anytime dining. We always do excursions. So, who knows when we'll be back on the ship and ready, dressed, hungry enough for dinner. Sassafras, I totally love that. That's so true. Mark Akira says, six meals a day. So, one meal about every three, four hours. Mark, that is really cute. That is so funny. Oh my gosh, you guys are cracking me up. I love this. This is so funny. Okay, question number two. What is the best steakhouse at sea? Go! Best steakhouse at sea. I can't wait to see your answers. This is going to be fun. All right. Oh, Royal Caribbean blog, Matt in the house is hashtag Team MDR. Yeah, you know what, Matt? We're totally Team MDR too. We're traditionalists, but we like the specialty too. But I'd never go to the buffet for dinner unless it's like an emergency. Like I don't even know. I can't. I can't remember a time when I went to the buffet for dinner. I like the buffet for lunch. Okay, votes are coming in on the best steakhouse at sea. We've got a Crown Grill. We've got a Princess Crown Grill. We've got a Five 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 Steakhouse from Holly on Carnival. Shantae says chops. Mark says chops. We got people, chops is a clear winner so far, guys. Royal Caribbean chops is in the house. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lot of chops. I'm seeing a lot of, I'm seeing, oh, pinnacle. I saw a pinnacle in the house. Oh, I love this. This is so fun. Oh, yeah. Roxanne says carnival 555. Oop, the Bourne says Cagney's. Cagney's slipped in. Oh, Verna said Cagney's. Oh, you guys, this is so good. Chops is really popular. I'm seeing a lot. We might have to get ourselves on a Royal Caribbean cruise, honey. Are you yawning? You don't get to yawn. No yawning. <laughs> All right, Sterling Steakhouse says Jim. Joe Ellen says, I don't know, I only eat in the MDR. That's okay. Oh, Kimberly Q in the house. Hi, Kimberly. Kimberly says Cagney's is delish. Diane says Moderno. Diane, I like Moderno too. It's one of my favorites. Do you guys wanna hear a few of my favorites? Cause I don't know how to pick. I can't pick one. Moderno is one of my favorites. Teppanyaki on any ship is so fun and I love it for my family. And I will tell you probably my favorite, I, if I had to pick one favorite, I think I would say it's Carnival Steakhouses, guys. They are the bomb. I, I don't know how they do it. What's that? Nick and Nora's. Well, that's just the one on, um, on Miracle. Is it Miracle or Splendor? So they name it something different on every ship. Carnival, I don't know why Carnival does that, but... Okay, this is good. Okay, so next question. There's two more questions. Question number three is best entree you've ever had on a cruise. Best entree you've ever had on a cruise. Go. Melanie's just putting some steak emojis in the chat. <laughs> Melanie, those are some nice looking steaks. What's that? You're starving. <laughs> Mr. Chris is he's like, I'm hungry. Get me to dinner. We'll go to dinner soon, honey, I promise. Now I want steak. What? Oh, guys burgers. You craving a guys burger? That sounds really good. Ooh, okay, let's see. What's everybody's favorite entrees? Okay, we got duck, we got scallops, we got night audits going for the porterhouse. Beef cheeks, Karen? They serve beef cheeks? 
Lobster, says Shauna. Steak and shrimp. Surf and turf. Smoked oyster. Crab legs. Oh, lots of lobster. Lots of lobster in the house. You guys are really wanting that surf and turf, that filet mignon. I'm seeing... Um, um, Oh man, you guys are really steak and lobster people. I'm thinking that's the clear winner tonight. Ooh, I got a couple ribeyes in the house. Pork chop. What else do we have? Okay. Let's see. Oh, filet mignon. Yep, I'm a filet mignon person too, whoever said that. Nope. Mm -mm. Would you like me to handle it? Okay. All right, sounds good. Oh, Kimberly, yeah, I'm a filet mignon girl too, 100%, twice. That is something we would do, Kimberly, um, is we would go twice and have the same exact thing at the steakhouse two times. Like, same appetizer, same, same filet mignon, and same dessert. <laughs> two times on one cruise, right? Um, let's see here. Oh, yummy. Lots of, lots of meat in the house. These are really good, you guys. I know there's just too many to choose. Jen says rosemary chicken. Yeah, Rummy says it's probably going to be a burger with a fried egg on it. Oh, Rummy, you'd be good friends with my husband. He would totally be down with that. Red Baker, you would also be good friends with my husband because he likes chilled fruit soups too. I think that chilled fruit soups are such a fun thing. Lobster risotto says New Indy. Salmon says Alicia Lee. These are fun, you guys. Okay, sounds great. All right, so we have one more question. We're going to be picking our winner very soon, so keep participating. What is your favorite specialty dining spot at sea? So I'm not talking about specifically steakhouses now. I just want to know your overall favorite specialty dining spot at sea. It could be anything. It could be free specialty dining, you know, like Guy's Burgers, or it could be an upcharge restaurant. Go. <laughs> These are great. Simple Char, I'm glad that you're enjoying the ideas. That's the idea with this is to let new cruisers hear from everybody. We don't need to do all the talking here. We don't know everything. I haven't been on every cruise ship. Who am I to say? You guys are the experts. You're the ones with all the amazing ideas. So I think that's the idea, is that we get a lot of different opinions here. Okay, I'm hearing some Cucina del, Cucina del Capitano. I've got a lot of Johnny Rockets in the house. Teppanyaki, Mongolian Wok, Guy's Burgers, Chops Grill, the Tandor, Krista. I like the Tandor as well. Nick and Nora is in the house. That would be Mr. Cruise Sips TV's vote. He likes Carnival Steakhouses a lot too. I'm seeing some Wonderland. I'm seeing Gigi's, Johnny Rockets, Alfredo's. Alfredo's is the pizza joint on Princess, for those of you who don't know. International Cafe. Who said that? Um, yes, Sarah Urich said International Cafe. That, my friend, is a very good Princess Pro tip right there. If you are going on a princess ship, the interna International Cafe is something we talk about in our Princess Cruises tips and tricks videos all the time because it is complimentary except for the espresso drinks, of course, that you're purchasing or the fancy teas, but they have 24-hour food on many princess ships and it's delicious. I love this. Johnny Rockets, Guy's Burgers, The Haven Restaurant. Ooh, Blue Iguana says Mel. Blue Iguana says Grace. Um, Trisha Skywalkers. Rebecca says Johnny Rockets. We got a lot of teppanyakis in the house. Oh, Gate Girl says Izumi. Yum. I know. Anne says Johnny Rockets for sure. I like your rocket, Anne. That's cute. Yeah, you guys are going to, if you're new to cruising, you're going to love all the dining options available to you on a cruise. There's just so many choices. Okay, it's time to choose a winner and we're going to wrap up our live stream because we are way more hungry than usual because we have been talking about food for 38 minutes straight and we haven't eaten dinner. And I don't know about you guys, but I've been awake for 14 hours. So I'm starving. I mean, I've eaten, but I'm, I'm hungry. So let's pick a winner, Mr. Cruise Tips TV. Let me know when you get done with that and we'll be ready. Um, for those of you who would like to join us tomorrow, Saturday, October 20th, we're having a first time cruisers Q&A session live stream at noon Pacific time. So come right back to Cruise Tips TV tomorrow, noon Pacific time. And we will be able to answer all the questions that we haven't had time to answer throughout this week or that you're, you know, you're, if you're a new cruiser and you're just uncomfortable about something and you need some clarity, we're here for you tomorrow, noon Pacific. Okie dokie. So our winner tonight is 
Julie Dennis. Julie, congratulations. Julie, email me your address at Sherry, S-H-E-R-I, at cruisetipstv.com. Don't leave it in the chat for security reasons. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, you guys, this was so fun. Thank you so much for participating. I hope you enjoyed the the um, the questions. I hope that you learned something tonight or picked up some new tips if you're a seasoned cruiser. I certainly did. I really can't wait to go back and watch all of the live chat comments because this is like we've just saved up an encyclopedia of expert knowledge from all of you. So thank you very much for joining us and we can't wait to see you tomorrow at noon Pacific time for a general cruise Q&A. And until next time, we'll see you on the high seas. Cruiser of the week! <laughs> Hey, click me to subscribe.